JBN will keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones. Before we get into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and share the news with someone today. Now on to the news. Taxi operator gunned down on Maninzil Road. The St. Andrew North Police are probing Thursday morning's shooting death of a taxi operator along Maninzil Road in St. Andrew. He has been identified as 56-year-old Richard Nemard of a Cassava Peace Road address. Reports are that, at about 4.40 a.m., residents heard explosions and summoned the police. On their arrival, Nemard was seen with multiple gunshot wounds in a sitting position in the driver's seat of a white and green Toyota Pro Box motor car. It was taken to hospital where it was pronounced dead. Killer facing murder and gun charges following shooting death of 38-year-old. A 28-year-old man is facing multiple gun charges following the shooting death of another Macintosh drive in Kingston on Saturday, July 20. Charged with murder, possession of a prohibited weapon, and using a prohibited weapon to commit a felony is Damien Latouche, otherwise known as Killer, a laborer from the Macintosh drive community. He is accused of killing 38-year-old Ryan Anglin. Reports are that, at about 11.40 p.m., Anglin was at his home when he was allegedly shot by Latouche. Lawmen were called to the scene after residents reportedly saw Anglin running from his yard and collapsed on the roadway. He was taken to the hospital where he allegedly told a relative that he was shot by Latouche. On Wednesday, July 24, Latouche turned himself into the police. He was officially charged after a question and answer session. A court date for him is being finalized. Poland man slapped with burglary and assault charges after attempting to steal a fan. A 48-year-old man of Black Hill District, Portland, has been charged with burglary and assault of common law after he allegedly pried open the door to a residence in Duncan Hill, Trelawney, and attempted to steal a fan. Charges Barrington Brown, otherwise called Jaculan. Reports from the Falmouth Police are that at about 2.30 a.m., Brown pried open the door to a house and attempted to remove a standing fan. The occupants of the house were alerted by the noise and went to investigate. In his bid to escape, the fan got tangled in a grill. Brown reportedly had to leave the item to ensure his escape. However, when the police were summoned, Brown was seen hiding on a nearby premises. He reportedly had a knife in his hand. He was instructed to drop the weapon, but disobeyed the police commands and attempted to use the knife to strike them. The lawman subdued Brown. He was subsequently arrested and charged. His court date is being arranged. Westmoreland police declares the parish closed to criminals. Westmoreland is not open for business to criminals. That's the word from commanding officer for the Westmoreland Police Division, Superintendent Othniel Dobson, amid reports that police in the division have seized 18 more guns between January 1 and July 29 this year compared to the corresponding period last year. 14 of the weapons, including seven high-powered military-grade assault rifles, were seized in the last three weeks. In addition to the guns, the police have seized 460 rounds of ammunition, a 5% increase when compared to the corresponding period last year. Superintendent Dobson says a major factor in the seizures has been the constant targeting of the notorious Kings Valley gang. Through intelligence-driven operations and strategic planning, we have made significant inroads into dismantling the Kings Valley gang. Our approach includes increased patrols, targeted raids, and community engagement, all aimed at breaking the back of crime in the parish. Westmoreland is not open for business for criminals. We are making it clear that everyone engaging in illegal activities will face the full force of the law. The results we are seeing are a testament to the hard work and dedication of our officers. The recent surge in weapon seizure demonstrates our strategic focus and unwavering resolve to protect our communities. The message is clear. Criminals will not find a safe haven here in Westmoreland. Jamaica looking overseas to fill teacher vacancies. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Dr. Kassan Troop, says the ministry is in advanced discussions with overseas-based institutions to recruit teachers to fill the shortage in local schools. So, with respect to our expanded international recruitment program, um, just let me update our nation that, you know, sometimes we take some things for granted. As the world is challenged with respect to the teaching profession and recruiting and maintaining and sustaining um, the cadre of teachers to deploy in their schools. 
we have a number of international um, organizations that have been in Jamaica recruiting. But interestingly, as we are trying to put our response together for this year, we have been addressed by other international countries. Actually, they came to us indicating that Jamaica is a lovely place. They have oversupply of teachers, and they would want their teachers to have the opportunity to serve in Jamaica. We did our research, and we have found that many of these countries, international organizations and other countries have also recruited from these spaces. And so we got some confidence from that with respect to our research. So we have the Philippines, their ambassador, they have met with us. We have the ambassador from Ghana who also came, paid a visit to our minister, and has met with us with his team. And just this week he has indicated that a team from Ghana will be in Jamaica in the week of the 11th of August to finalize conversations with us as to access to their teachers in Ghana. What is interesting with this discussion, colleagues, is that they are interested in working for the same emoluments as we offer to our teachers in Jamaica. Nothing more, and in some instances, we are getting a number of volunteers who have also expressed some interest in you know, de being deployed to assist with our, our shortage that we have right here in Jamaica. And predominantly, our areas are mathematics and the sciences for this year. In addition to that, I think we have seen some increases in our language teachers, our specialists for English language. We have seen some persons resigning as well. But I need to say to the country that we are not seeing the great shift as we saw last year in the number of resignations at this time. So for the way forward, we have our Cuban program. Those persons are with us. We have 75 of those persons with us, and they are coming back to Jamaica to start in the new academic year. In addition to that, we have nationals from 15 other countries right here in Jamaica. So that's about 90 persons already serving in our education system. And a number of those persons were recruited through schools um, with, of course, the ministry's blessing. So those persons are already deployed, and they are from the USA, from the Philippines, from Nigeria, from India, and a number of other countries. And now we are being joined again with the interests of the Philippines, Ghana, and, and we are looking forward to those conversations. The interesting thing about our response is not to force this kind of engagement, but more so to provide options. As you know, as per the education regulation, the recruitment is really the remit of our boards of management. Our responsibility as a ministry is to provide options for our principals. Our CEO did a survey um, trying to solicit her to obtain the interest of our principals and school boards in utilizing this opportunity. And I must say, we have got tremendous response from, from our school principals, and we used that data to have the conversation with our international partners. So we are being guided by data. We are being guided by the support on the ground, and our responsibility is to provide the options. We are not forcing, but our schools must have options as they try to make sure that their staff members are in place for the new academic year. So we are, we are advanced, and we are grateful for the opportunity for other persons to see what we have to offer as, an, as a country and try to access that as we advance the education mission. Thanks. Dr. Chupo speaking at the post-cabinet press briefing on Wednesday. Principals and school boards have expressed concern for the upcoming school year amid the continued mass migration of teachers. The education ministry says 854 teachers resigned from the system between January and September last year. JCF gets additional 40 vehicles. The government has provided the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, with 40 additional vehicles at a cost of over $313 million dollars. They include 20 Mitsubishi L200 pickups, 7 Toyota Hilux pickups, and 10 Kia Sorento Sport Utility Vehicles. Minister of National Security, Dr. Horace Chang, who handed over the keys to the JCF at the Office of the Commissioner of Police in St. Andrew on July 31, said they will be used to further help reduce crime across the island. Stressing that mobility is essential for the police to maintain safety and public order, Chang said that security agents must have a firm lead on the movement of cash and goods, and recent attacks on them, if not controlled, can impact the economy. 
is the safe movement of cash and the safe movement of goods. Unless that can be conducted without fear, the economy will be pressured. And if we don't control safety and public order, the economy will be strangled. Hence the government's commitment to provide the police with the required tools and facilities, the minister added. Chang said the addition of the new vehicles will enable the officers to respond more swiftly and effectively to incidents and improve public safety and security. So the officers who will be using these vehicles, I urge you to utilize them responsibly and effectively in the line of your duty. Together, we'll continue to strive for a safer, more secure and prosperous nation, he said. Since 2016, the government has spent more than $4.8 billion on the acquisition of motor vehicles for the JCF and is projected to spend another $8.7 billion over the next three years. The investments are critical as the government continues to announce the police communication systems increase human resource numbers, and improve the situational awareness through initiatives that Jamaica I, the minister said. The JSF is exploring a policy to possibly write off and dispose of forced vehicles after five or so years to ensure that it maintains an efficient fleet. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.